All right, guys, what's going up? Metal Raymond here um, today <laughs> on Old School RuneScape for a change, which is very different from what I usually upload, as you guys know. Um, fair warning, anyone that has been subscribed probably knows this, but I am a private server player. That is mainly what I do. I'm a RSPS YouTuber by, like, how you want to categorize it. So what I play mainly is private servers. I haven't logged into Old School RuneScape in literal years. Until like yesterday, <laughs> where I first tried it out and I knew the hype was coming and all of that. But as a change of pace, I wanted to give this a try. I mean, it, it looks really fun. I've seen a lot of videos on the Twisted Leagues when that was first released and it seems like a fucking blast doing tasks and locking relics. I know a little bit about it. But I'm a fucking noob when it comes to all the RuneScape. So fair warning, I have no clue what I'm doing. And I probably won't for a long, long time. I will do my best to like learn from other people's videos, what they did, what decisions to make and all of that stuff. But um, this is gonna be a bit of a, let's do this together and see how far we can get. I don't know how long I'm gonna be doing this. I don't know how much time I will invest in this. Don't. I'm not gonna be shooting for any ranks most likely. That's not very feasible. Because, you know, Old School RuneScape doesn't pay my bills, I have to play other things to do that, so... We'll just put in a little bit of our free time into this and see how far we can get, but it looks extremely fun. Um, leagues are time-limited game modes that give you new ways to experience the world of Gilenor. The aim of each league is to complete tasks and earn league points. These points can then be exchanged for various unlocks and rewards. To begin your journey in Leagues 2 Trailblazer, use the Get Started button, otherwise you can use the Exit there. Okay, get started. Let's make a little character real quick. I mean, this is the boring part, let's just uh, skip over this. Alright, absolutely beautiful. The Leagues Bla Trailblazer goes over here, and then you can click here for the Twisted Leagues, apparently. And you can click Task, oh, then you get your first point right away, that's cool. Let's take a look at the task list. This is the task list here, you can see all the tasks available to you in this league. Continue. It's nice that it gives you a little tutorial for the people that have no fucking clue what they're doing. And you can choose the first one for free. So if we click one, it should show what it gives. Let me have a look over all of them. Resources gathered from fishing, woodcutting and mining are multiplied by two. I was low-key thinking of this one, because I'll probably be playing leagues quite a bit AFK and this would help a lot. All resources gathered by this relic are sent directly to your bank if you have space, otherwise they are placed in your inventory. Items which normally cannot be banked will be placed in your inventory and even if you have bank space, Tip, if you fill your bank with bank fillers, the resources will go to your inventory instead. What are the other ones? When doing the following activities, all items are processed at once. Smelting ores, smithing bars, and making cannonballs. Fletching logs, stringing bows, cutting bolt tips. Cleaning herbs, making potions which do not have a stackable secondary ingredient. Cooking food and making jugs of wine. Crafting leather, unka gems, full XP is given for the items process. I kind of like that even more, I mean, that sounds incredibly useful. Passive effector at run and G will never drain whilst running? Bro. All non combat skills are permanently boosted by plus 12, the boost from this relic does not stack. Yeah, that already sounds not interesting. Oh, all of them give run energy, that's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go with this one, even though the other one makes more AFK-ness. This is just so fucking strong, that saves so much time in whatever the hell you're doing, skilling-wise. Master Relic and Tutorial, and that should give me 10 league points for completing the tutorial. Pretty cool. I'm gonna have a little look, because this is a really long intro, and then uh, I'll see what I'm gonna do first. Right, I think I'm gonna start off with a little bit of teething if I can manage to do so. Oh wow, you get points right away as well, that's pretty crazy. But um, probably gonna need some food soon, maybe kill some cows or something. Start off with a bit of a lower NPC, but we'll get there over time, that's for sure. Right, I need one more coin bag and opening 28 of them will give me some beginner cash in order to go through the Al Carrot gate. I hope. I think it's 10 GP at least. There we go. And it, you should get a task for opening 28 at once. Yeah, there you go. Another 10 points earned. Beautiful. Or maybe not because you need uh, that area unlocked, you dumbass. <laughs> uh, lots to learn. So we're probably going to have to. Man, you have to really think about what you want to unlock, but the desert is huge outside of Alcarat as well. But how much is in there to be worth unlocking? I don't know. Tough decisions. Can't you uh, fish for shrimp somewhere around here? Sure fucking hope so. 
I don't know, man. See, this is what I mean. I don't play old school RuneScape. I have no fucking clue where to fish shrimp. I think we can use the whale, whale, whale stone, or whatever it's called, to go to Karamja. And then teleport over there. Oh, you get even points for using it? That's crazy. Goes really quick at the start, doesn't it? <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I think over on Karamja we should be able to fish shrimp, no doubt. Okay, I'm an idiot, but that's okay. I'll learn as I go. I'll uh, figure this all out in due time. We can fish at home, at Lumbridge, and then a little bit on the side of that. I'm guessing this dude played a lot of Twisted League on the other one. But before we do that, we're gonna buy a few things from the Shiloh Village. I feel like that's a good thing to do, but that costs 200 coins. We need more, more GP for that, damn. This is a grind. I actually ended up doing a lot of things late at night where I couldn't do commentary, so we're just gonna kinda speed run through everything, speed it up. So first off I fished my full inventory of shrimps, tried getting that out of the way, cooked it all on a fire because I had not yet done Cook's Assistant, although I did realize that this was a tax, so we quickly finished that quest, did all the requirements, got our wheat, got our milk, got our egg. Completed that quest so we could start it using that range. First of all, you burn less food, and second of all, you get a task for doing that. We also completed cook five food in a row without burning it, and we talked to the cook after that in order to get recipe for disaster started, in case I at some point become uh, uh, able to get all the requirements for that. Would be very nice if we could get somewhere along the road, because those gloves are absolutely amazing, of course. We then started to train up a little bit of combat skills, didn't want to overdo it due to the waterfall quest, but we needed some feathers to start fishing and all of that stuff, so we grinded those out for just a little bit, get our stats up to 10 attack, 10 strength, and also 5 defense, so we could later down the line wear a spine helmet for a task. I then went ahead and sh uh, shared one sheep so I could do a ball of wool task, and we also uh, did some small things in between. Started to do a little bit of agility, did a few course runs to get it up, trying to get a Marks of Grace, but I wasn't but I wasn't lucky enough to get one spawned, so I couldn't complete that task yet. Quickly killed a goblin along the way and bought myself a Steel Axe, which is another task. Run into the Death's, uh, Death's Office, whatever it's called, in order to get that task out of the way. Started doing a little bit of mining, just enough to get a task done, mine some copper ore, melt a bronze bar and all of that stuff. Got a little bit of levels off of that. We then got a easy task um, clue scroll from a bird's nest, which is lucky in and of its own. Unfortunately, the very first step was something I couldn't complete. We then did the barbarian assaults, or whatever it's called, the barbarian thingy, in order to get our 10,000 GP and the task for the fancy boots. We then did the uh, museum part, so we could get 20 slayer and hunter, which was very useful. Made a little plank real quick. Did an agility run for one ticket, almost died doing that, that was an awful choice. And then uh, we unlocked the jewelry relic, which was, um, in hindsight, maybe not the best choice, but at the time I really wanted that wide variety of teleports. We then went ahead and did a bunch of fishing, got another task I couldn't really complete. Well, we did manage to do a few steps later down the line. Got some flex from a quick uh, random event, and then I went ahead and did some tree spirits, try to get myself a rune hatchet like everyone else, which we did manage to get quite late at night, it took a while for me to get it, but uh, you know, it was very nice, we got a few alcohols along the way, such as steel axes, adamant axes, all of that. That's about it, let's hop back to the live commentary. Alright then guys, I just used up all the spell casting I actually had for uh, firebolt on that stupid <laughs> tree spirits. I did manage to get a rune axe at the very end of it, so I'm pretty happy about that, but was definitely hoping for a little bit more, like a second or a third one. However, we did get a juicy amount of nature runes and some spare drops, including an uncut diamond, which I'm pretty sure is the red drop table. That's okay, not a huge, huge deal. What we're gonna be doing right now is uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some longbows. Uh, first gonna do the regular logs and then switch over to oak logs as soon as I can and then start elking those for a little bit of money and magic XP. First, let's do a very quick little quest, the sheep share. I also need to get level 10 crafting for uh, bow strings, so gonna try and get that real soon. Awesome, the quest did give me all the way to 12 crafting. 
and 60 GP, which is kind of irrelevant. But um, even then, pretty nice. That will allow me to make bowstrings with those nine flex we got from a, a beehive random event, if I remember correctly. But that will allow me to do a few more tasks later down the line, which I think is like make a willow or an oak short bow. I think both of them have one. Yeah, fletch an oak short bow, and then there should be an willow one somewhere down the line as well, if I remember correctly. We'll find it in due time. All right, did quite a few small tasks, including like uh, cut a log with a rune axe, which gave like 50 points, so it's going up quite quickly. However, we need five more tasks in order to uh, unlock the next area, which is extremely important, as you guys can already know, most likely. Um, sold a bunch of the bows for a decent amount of change. A little bit of money here and there. We're gonna go ahead and pickpocket some ham members now for one, a task, and two, trying to obtain the steel pickaxe. We need one for a task as well in the near future, and uh, you know, two birds with one stone. Maybe we'll even get a clue scroll, I don't freaking know. But um, yeah, lots and lots to do even now. We also need to start pickpocketing farmers and try to plant something somewhere. I think the allotment hub is one you need to do at level one, which is uh, potatoes basically. That's cool. So yeah, lots and lots to do. Let's go ahead and pickpocket the hand member first. Hey, it took a little while, but there we go. Our steel pickaxe has been obtained. I kind of want to get more because you need 38 for a farmer. But this sucks ass. I hate hand members getting kicked out every few minutes and stuff. We also got a lever body along the way, so that's gonna help us uh, range gear wise a little bit at the start. I mean, don't have much to begin with. But still pretty decent overall. There we go. Use a steel pickaxe task completed as well. Four more. Oh, three more, and then we'll be able to unlock the uh, next area. I already know I'm going to go with uh, Kandarin. You probably see this in a lot of videos. Just the most versatile area as far as I'm concerned, and I'll be able to do a bunch of quests in a row, such as Waterfall into the uh, Port Cazard one, um, Fight Arena I think it's called. Those kind of quests get my uh, stats up quite significantly without even having to train, so that's going to help out a bunch as well, but I'm um, gonna go ahead and train mining and smithing up just a little bit more. Alright, basically did a full inventory of bronze bars, just uh, superheating them at the spot, very handy because it makes me need to bank a lot less. Considering I don't have that one perk that allows you to auto bank it. Now we're gonna go ahead and smooth all of that into mm, skimmy tars. It doesn't matter all that much, does it? Now should do it all in one go. There we go. That will give us a half decent weapon to begin with as well. Could probably sell that for a few GP. And let's go ahead and superheat this one. And I craft that. Uh, what level do you need for? Iron arrowheads. So we need to make a bunch of those. It's level 20, so we're gonna have to grind a few more iron ores for that. But it shouldn't take all that long, to be honest. Just do uh, arrow tips, I don't know. That didn't give us a level, but one more iron bar maybe. Okay, that's cool. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more. I'll be able to create 150 arrow tips. All at once, beautiful 25 smithing as well. Oh, that's a task in and of its own, that's great. And then let's go ahead and create... I don't think it really matters what we make, to be fair. I prefer making dart tips, but... Oh, you need a quest for that, Jesus Christ, imagine. Um, bolts, limbs, knives? Let's make knives, that works. That might come in handy for range training later. I do believe I have 150 arrow, arrow headless arrows already. Or not, but I can make them. Where are my feathers? Should be very doable. Do I not have headless arrows? No. Huh, I could have sworn I had some of those. Just uh, go create 150 of those. Oh, don't, they don't make them all at once. That's a shame. But then we make the iron arrows, and that's going to be another task, which will put us at one remaining. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the Vampire Slayer quest. Since we're now getting really close to the next area unlock as well. So we're gonna do Vampire Slayer, get our tag level up, uh, unlock the new area, and then uh, probably start the quest questing grind a little bit further than that. Alright, on our way to kill the vampire now. I do believe that the last task I need 
I'll get simply from entering this building because you need to enter the Drynor Maynor for a task if I'm correct. We'll find out in just a second here when I click this large door. Yep, that's a task. Well, doesn't matter too much, we're still gonna complete Vampire Slayer and that's going to be the unlock. Very, very nice. You've completed enough tasks to unlock the new area. We're making hella progress, boys. <laughs> Probably, well, by far not the closest out of every anyone, but um, at least we're doing something. Oh god, Firebolt is so overpowered when you're low level. Look at how quickly this piece of shit is dying, that's crazy. Should automatically hammer him down once it's dead, boom. Quest completed. Wow, that's ridiculously easy. Task done. Quest done. 40 attack achieved. Can now use room weaponry and stuff, which, you know, at best I can use my... Uh, well, reach level 500 total. Very nice. Didn't imagine we already were hitting that. That's pretty good. It's pretty good indeed. There's that one other quest that I kind of want to get done later, but um, it is the... Mistalin Mystery, because I do believe it gives me like 25 crafting, if not more, which is pretty damn useful. And you get a sapphire from it, which you can cut for another task as well. So all of that together will add up quite nicely. But let's go ahead and run to a safe zone a little bit. You know, I don't want to get attacked by a tree while I do it. Get out of here. And then if we go to task areas, we can now unlock the new area, Kandarin, which is what I'm going to be going for. Tree Gnome Stronghold. Allows me to teleport a lot easier and all of that. Ardon, Valdip Hills, all of that. Bada bing, bada boom. And it should also automatically complete Monkey Madness 1 and 2, if I'm correct. If I uh, remember, if I read it correctly. Yeah, a bunch of quests get automatically... Whoa! Room Mysteries get auto-completed? Huh. I didn't even have to do the damn quest. Although I might miss out on a little bit of XP from it, but I could care less. That's pretty damn useful. You get a lot of quests from it, don't you? Monkey Madness 1 and 2 completed as well, so that's very useful. Alright, we completed the first step on our medium clue. Cheer in the Edgefield General Store. Dance before you talk to me. Equip a brown apron, leather boots and leather gloves. I do believe that's doable. Alright, we should be able to buy a brown apron and the leather boots right here. Very minimal GP and then it was in Edgefield, right? Edgefield General Store. There's a general store in Edgefield? Huh. Okay, that was a stupid comment. I know there's a fucking general store in Edgefield. You go to the GE and walk from there. Yep, third step is completely undoable. Don't have access to Mauritania and the items seem near impossible as well, so we're just gonna bank that for now. Alright, and this should now be a waterfall quest completed, giving us 50 attack and or 53 attack and 50 strength. Very, very nice. And some Mithril CJ. Flower poker. Currently making a few willow bows. Including a full one for that 50 point task. Absolutely beautiful. Just gonna get some more cash. Selling all of them. And then uh, use that money for a bit more casts. And now we're gonna go ahead and do fight arena. Don't wanna run out of runes mid, mid quest. <laughs> Alright, I'm quickly gonna try and get a rusty sword. Which will allow me to do the Ardowny, Ardubny, Ardown... Uh, easy task, which will give me the cape and an XP lamp on top of that, so that's gonna be very nice. But first we need a rusty sword in order to complete that. Everything else we should be able to do right off the bat. It's not that difficult. Just hope we get the rusty sword quickly, because I didn't even bring food. Well, no rusty sword yet, but we did get a guam leaf, which is another easy task. Very nice. Gonna let my HP regenerate for just a little while. Let's go ahead and see how much money we made from all of this. I wanted to compare these prices. Willow Longbow, if you fully crafted, is 32 GP. It's not even bad, to be honest. I was considering to... Oh, Willows. Okay, okay. Not bad. How much is this? Ooh, Sapphire Ring, 360 GP. Managed to get that from the... Uh, what's it called? The bird's nest that I got along the way, so that's pretty nice as well. Not even worth selling, to be honest. I'm gonna keep that Guam in case we end up getting uh, Eye of Newt somewhere along the road. Because that is a task as well. If only we had some food right now. Restore five prayer points at an altar should be a task as well. Beautiful. Right, we managed to get our rusty sword for the RD easy task. Gonna do that soon. 
I'm gonna use the money I gained from all those willow items to uh, buy some more runes first and then try to do the fight arena. Hopefully we'll have enough. If we run out mid quest that would suck a lot. Alright and this should be fight arena completed. Go ahead and collect that beautiful teething and attack XP and a thousand coins. Beautiful. 58 attack, 37 teething. That's almost enough for farmers now to big pocket. Beautiful progression right there. And I needed those coins because I didn't have enough GP for my rusty sword. So let's do that real quick as well. Alright, and by selling silk for 60 GP, we now have completed the easy Ardone diary. Very nice. Let's go collect our cape real quick and the XP lamp. Probably gonna chug it on prayer because uh, I don't want to camp for bones. Alright, here we go. Let's get our lamp and cape. Beautiful. Some really nice uh, teleport and stats. Chug this on prayer. How much XP? Whoa. You need to have level 30 before you can use it. Christ, can we bank this lamp? <laughs> Did not think that one true. Alright, I tried doing some fire giants, but I ran out of casts. Didn't get any drops that would make me enough money to continue. So, talking about money, that is exactly what we're gonna be aiming for right now. Just gonna pickpocket warriors, guards, whatever the flying fuckity, until I have the GP I want. Alright, there's level 40 teething. Should now be able to do guards instead. Oh yeah, pickpocket a guard. That's another 50 easy points right there. Alright, instead of trying to get 30 prayer, because that's gonna delay long and it's gonna be in my inventory forever and ever, I'm just gonna use an anti thing. And a lot of people might be like, oh, that's such a waste, but it might actually significantly speed up the process. Okay, it's, it's not that much XP, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, level set 47 and now 48, so 7 more levels, and then I can move over to the knight as well. That should give significantly more GP per, uh, well, per hour. My third ever random event and it's another evil bob one. Definitely not the best, but it does give me some free fishing XP. Like a few thousand, like 2k, 3k, I don't know. Not that much though. 5.2k actually, oh wow, that's way more than I was expecting. Yeah, okay, that was pretty worth it. There we go, we are now finally 55 teething and we can do the, uh, pal the, the, the knights. Not the Paladins, Knights. Ah, oh, finally. Let's see how much this gives, actually. I have no freaking clue how much GP you get. Oh my, 50 each? That's not bad at all. I don't think I'm gonna pickpocket all the way to a D-Skimmy, though. That sounds like absolute torture. Alright then, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed that first episode. We're gonna continue in the next one. We did quite a bit of progress for one episode, as far as I'm concerned. I know there are YouTubers out there that are... You know, destroying the series and just getting fucking three relics in that first episode and all of that. You know, I am not that hardcore, unfortunately. We're gonna end it off right here. Gonna be been doing a little bit of fishing while uh, while editing the video and all of that, so that's pretty dope. Um, yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed. If you're a new viewer, you're not familiar with my channel, I highly recommend you don't subscribe. Uh, like, genuinely, I don't think you'll enjoy the rest of my content. If you do want to follow the rest of this, you know, me playing the Trailblazer, then of course you are free to, you know, subscribe if you really want to. But keep in mind, uh, outside of this Trailblazer, I most likely won't upload any old Karunscape type of videos, so that is something to keep in mind. Just being honest here, but I do enjoy the idea of sharing some progress on this and, uh, you know, showing my side of things and how we progress on this, because it's one hell of a lot of fun. One hell of a... It's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm having a... I'm having one hell of a blast playing this uh, this game mode. That's one thing, that's for sure. And I can't wait to progress even more, get to our third relic. We're gonna be doing a lot, lot, lot more things in the next episode. See y'all then. Peace out, boys.